Well, as you might realize, there are exceptions to this, and some patients just don't fit into these categories. There are some people who have just a single bone lesion, like right on top of the head or up in the front. That's the frontal bone. And for those individuals, maybe just doing surgery or curatage, cleaning out the lesion could be adequate. Sometimes injection of steroids is okay for a single lesion there or the vertebrae. Sometimes radiation therapy could be used for a, collapse, a single collapsed vertebra or a, a leg uh, lesion. But those are really very special uh, characteristics and we have to make sure that truly the disease is only in one place. So such a patient who has a, a single bone lesion needs to have a very complete workup to make sure that's true. Skin involvement can be pretty frustrating because it might be the only place that disease is present. And in the uh, experience of many investigators, using steroid creams is maybe helpful, maybe not. Sometimes we have to use oral methotrexate or some other drugs to treat skin disease alone. If it's in the pituitary gland causing that diabetes insipidus, th and that's the only place, this is a very controversial play, uh, topic, and really there's no standard therapy that's been uh, discussed other than giving the replacement of the hormone. Some people think we may want to treat these uh, patients with some uh, chemotherapy to prevent the disease from moving elsewhere in the body, but we don't have very good tests to prove that the, a pituitary lesion is just uh, LCH. There are actually five other diagnoses that have to be considered, and it's quite difficult to uh, discern which of the five diagnoses might be correct for a patient with just diabetes insipidus. So this is a tough area and takes some discussion with your doctor and with uh, experts around the world. And finally, there are patients who have the LCH in the brain, and I'll talk about this a little later. We call this a degenerative disease, and it's, it's like a uh, disease such as multiple sclerosis in which the patient might have problems with their balance, with their thinking, with their uh, working with other people, and this is a, a very, very tough problem, and there are some therapies that are suggested for this disease, but there really are no studies yet, so we need to be uh, thinking about how to get an organized treatment protocol together for them. What do we do when the first treatments don't work? Well, sometimes you can reapply the first treatments if there's some space of time, say six or 12 months, in between the recurrence of disease. But for those very young children whose disease is in the liver, spleen, bone marrow, and lungs, if they don't respond to that first six, uh, 12 weeks of therapy in the LCH3 protocol, we put them on to a new treatment plan with some very, very uh, strong chemotherapy drugs called cytosine arabinoside and 2CDA. This is called the LCHS protocol for 2005. And it has been, uh, in early uh, results, I think, very encouraging for these children who once had quite a, uh, a difficult time. So we will see if uh, early results prove out, but at this point it, it does look quite encouraging. Occasionally we consider bone marrow transplant for a patient who has very resistant disease, but the child has to be in some sort of uh, good state of health. We have to get rid of most of the LCH before they can go to bone marrow transplant. And that is, of course, a, a very extreme therapy. Others, well, yes, there are some experimental drugs out there, and many of us are trying to uh, bring new drugs into the treatment protocols of the patients, but these take time, and there really aren't uh, a lot of studies out there to suggest which drugs we should choose, but we do have some ideas, so I wouldn't uh, give up hope if there is uh, problems with the first treatment. There are some other histiocytes studies, and one of them is for the central nervous system uh, patients, those that have the neurodegenerative disease. And it's really more of a protocol to follow the patients and see how they uh, develop their disease and what problems are occurring and how can we evaluate them. We have some treatment suggestions, but it's not exactly a treatment protocol right now. But it's very important for patients with this condition to be put on the protocol so that we gather more data. The number of patients that we've studied is uh, really too small yet to say we understand this completely and we need help from doctors all over the world to get this uh, study more to scientific uh, uh, excellence. Finally, there's a, there is a, now a study for adults. We call it the LCHA1 study 
and this is a, an approved protocol in many centers throughout the world. It is modeled on the childhood study using some of the same drugs, vinblastin, prednisone, and uh, mercaptopurine. It also has a special part of it to study adults with lung disease. For adults who are smokers, this is a big problem. LCH can be caused by smoking, and if smoking is stopped, the disease may not progress. But sometimes, even with stopping smoking, the disease slowly progresses to the point where a lung transplant would be needed. Unfortunately, we don't have long-term follow-up studies of uh, individuals with pulmonary LCH, so we really don't know what it's like to have a patient who stops smoking or gets some steroid treatment or who might get some other treatment, and how can we predict which patients might need a lung transplant or might need other therapy. And that's why this study, the LCHA1 study, has been developed so we can get a long-term follow-up of many patients and develop a story and so we can be more uh, knowledgeable about what happens with LCH. What do we have for results? Well, this is uh, from actually the LCH1 therapy that was uh, published several years ago, and it shows that for those patients who had liver, lung, and spleen disease, if they responded by the first six weeks, they had a 90% survival. Very, very good for children who are quite sick. If they only responded a little bit by six weeks, then their survival was in the 70% range. But those that didn't respond well by week six, it was 40% or less. And in fact, later studies suggest that maybe only 25% of these patients survived. And this is the challenging group that we have to work on, and now we have this salvage therapy, so we treat these kids with a more intensive chemotherapy uh, plan earlier. We don't let them go on and on if there's still evidence of disease. Disease can come back, and although the recurrence of the disease does not mean a fatal outcome, it's very frustrating and it's bothersome to come back to the hospital for treatment. And we looked at three different studies for patients uh, who, again, had risk organ involvement with liver, lung, and spleen. And there was almost a 50% chance of them having their disease come back within two years of finishing treatment. The red line shows a study from Germany back in the uh, mid-80s through early 90s. The blue line is the first LCH one study, the green, the LCH2 study. And the big difference between these two, uh, uh, between the red line and the blue and green line, is that this red line group of patients, the, uh, the German study from the 90s, these patients had a year of treatment versus six months with the others. And these patients also had the addition of methotrexate and 6-MP as part of their maintenance therapy. So it didn't seem to help those patients with the risk organs, but then when we look over here on this other slide, these are patients who just had bone or skin or lymph node disease, that means without risk organ. And here there's a clear difference. Longer treatment and the addition of those other two drugs seem to be quite helpful in uh, reducing the chance of, of uh, new disease. That is why with the LCH3 protocol, we're treating all patients for 12 months.